The steps to solve a friction problem aren't really any different than any other kinds of equilibrium problems. Remember that friction is just a point force. It's just a force. What I do want to make sure that you understand is when you can assume that motion is impending. So our steps to solve friction problems, read the problem, draw a free body diagram, assume equilibrium. So I'm assuming that nothing's moving, or if it's moving, it's not going to change its motion. Apply your friction opposite motion. So ask yourself, if there were no friction at all, which way would my object move? Put friction in the other direction. Apply your normal, or whatever normals you have at the different surfaces, at unknown locations. You just don't know where they're going to act. Put them at some sort of X location. List your forces in Cartesian form. Write your equations of equilibrium. I haven't assumed anything yet. This is the question, the key phrase for you. Is motion impending, and if so, where? Where motion is impending, you can assume that F is equal to mu S times M, but only there. And what we end up with is a bunch of different cases. So you might have, it slips here but not here, or it slips here and here. And you need to be able to consider all of your options. So this sort of steps will let you get to this without having assumed anything at this point. So your equations of equilibrium will be good no matter what happens. Let's look at a couple examples. The first one is a 100 pound crate on the floor, just a flat surface. It's four feet wide and six feet tall. I want to find out what P value I need here at a 3, 4, 5 triangle to move this where mu s is 0.5. That's my free body diagram with distances and everything. I'm going to put F opposing motion. So if there were no friction on this surface, this crate would move this way. So friction points that way. The normal force I put at some distance x here. I don't know where it is exactly. I'm going to let my equations of equilibrium tell me. So my equations of equilibrium say 4 fifths of p is f, that's the x component. 3 fifths of p is 100, plus 100 equals n. And 4 fifths of p, that's the x component, the moment arm is 6. 3 fifths of p times the moment of arm of 2. Those are in opposite directions when I'm taking the sum of the moments about that point. So I'll have one of them positive, the other one negative. And those have to be balanced by n acting at whatever distance x it is. So if I simplify that equation, I have 18p equals 5 times nx. These, so far I haven't assumed anything. My unknowns, though, I've got four unknowns and three equations. That, I can't solve that without actually assuming something. So I go back to the problem. What do I want to know? I want to know what p I need to have to slide this thing or to tip this thing. I mean, I have an object here. It could move. It could tip or it could slip. I need to solve this problem in either case. So assuming only that it tips. Now the tipping condition is that n has to act at the very corner of the body. If it has to act way over here to maintain equilibrium, then it's not on the object and that doesn't work. So my tipping assumption is that x equals 2. If I put that in and solve, I get p equals 83. It could also slip. My slipping condition is the same one it always is. f is equal to mu, mu s times n. I plug that into my equations of equilibrium and I get p equals 100. Now to try to figure out which of these is the actual answer, which one happens first? Go back to the problem. If p were 0, would it move? No, it wouldn't go anywhere. So as you're increasing from 0, sooner or later you're going to get to either one of these. Well, sooner or later you get to this one. So this crate will tip over before it slips. The only way to make it slip would be to move p down or to put p at a smaller angle. You have to change the problem because this problem is going to tip over first. This is where it's important not to assume this. If you assume that f is equal to mu s times n, you're going to get this problem wrong. The second one I want to look at is a, the same crate except on the slope. If you look at this crate and you put it on the slope, the friction force has, has to act tangent to the slope. It's along the edge. Normal has to be normal to the surface. So this is my free body diagram. My equations of equilibrium without assuming anything look like this. Divide one by the other, you can get f over n equals tan theta. Now the nice thing about this is that when I assume that motion is impending, this is what I want to know. This does not assume motion is impending, this does. 
If I put in f equals mu s times n, I get f over n is mu s. That's tan theta. The block slides when theta is the arctan of mu s. Well, that's your phi, phi s, that's your angle of repose. The block is going to slide when this angle, theta, ends up being phi s, the angle of repose. And the other way that you can do this is to look at a single resultant. If you take the resultant of f and n, you have to have, you only have two forces. You have r and you have f, uh, w, r and w. If you only have two forces, they have to be equal and opposite. And that angle theta has to be the angle phi, which would be the angle between n and r. So the last example says, what happens if I'm pushing on it, if I have a force p? If I have a force p, I want to find the range of p to maintain equilibrium. I'm going to take an actual number here from us. This is 0.35. Theta is 30 degrees. What p do I have to have to keep the block still? So the first thing to check is the angle of repose. If I take the arctan of phi s, I get 19. That means without a p, that block slides down because theta is bigger than that angle of repose. Assuming then that p is not 0, it's greater than 0, I have two choices. It can move down the slope or it could move up the slope. Those are the two things that could happen. These are my free body diagrams. They're the same except for the direction of f. f is either opposing the motion down, which means it's going up, or it's opposing the motion up, in which case f is coming down. Same equations of equilibrium in both cases except for the sign on f. If the block is sliding down, f and p are in the same direction. If the block is sliding up, f and p are in opposite directions. So these are my equations of equilibrium. After I write my equations of equilibrium, I can say add impending motion, f is equal to mu s times n. And in both cases, I can solve. I get 19.7 in one case and 80.3 in the other, 80.3 pounds. Those are my boundaries. As long as p is in between those two, the block stays where it needs to be. What does that look like when I'm looking at my resultant forces instead? Here's my resultant between n and f. If f is going up the slope or as f is going down the slope, so the opposite motions. The thing here is that phi max, phi max is the angle of repose. That's as big as it can get. So phi max, phi s is the inverse of tan of mu s. That's 19.29. We did that a minute ago. So if you look at this angle here, n makes an angle of 30 degrees, that's the slope, to the vertical. So r is going to be on this sort of edge of this. It's not all the way up at w, it's down a bit. This angle here between r and w is theta minus phi s. That gives me 10.71. And I know that this angle up here between p and w is already known. That's 90 minus theta. It's 60 degrees. So now I have all of my angles and I have one side. I can use the law of sines to find out what p and r should be in this case. And it's the same thing down here, except that now my r is in the other direction. This one, r is pointing up the slope with f, and here it's pointing down the slope with f. So this phi s now is the same, but it's on the other side. So now I have theta plus phi s is 49.29. Still, I know all my angles. I know that w is 100 pounds and I can find all this with the law of signs. So when you're doing these friction problems, the key, the very key is to make sure you've not assumed anything when you're writing your free body diagram and your equations of equilibrium. Then ask yourself, where is it going to slip? Where do I know that motion is impending? You may have to take different cases. It's going up, it's coming down, or it slips here and not here. There may be different thing, cases that you have to take. But that's problem specific, and it comes from the answer to the question, where is motion impending? That's your key. Thanks.